It seems texture and bacon are getting neglected for yet another year. How disappointing. <laughs> Let's talk about the Blender Roadmap. Alright guys, how's it going? I hope you're doing very well. Before I even start this conversation, go and check out Ian Hubert's animation it just dropped today. It's fucking fantastic. Congratulations mate, it's outstanding work. Some of the best Blender work I've actually ever seen. I'll leave a link in the description down below. Go and watch the high resolution version. It deserves it, it deserves it. Anyway, let's talk about the Blender 2021 roadmap. Believe it or not, a lot of 3D companies kind of keep this private, so having something nice and public like this is it's actually a bit of a joy, to be honest. Now, one thing about having a public roadmap is you can kind of hold the company over a barrel to a certain degree. If they don't deliver on this roadmap, well, you can chin them for it. So let's kick this off. 2021 promises to be a busy and exciting year. We'll be working on the second LTS, long-term support, and on Blender 3.0 which includes a lot of new development, this year also marks the 10th anniversary of Cycles. Now, they're kind of they're being a little bit shady at the moment. <laughs> They've got something under their heart, they're kind of celebrating 10 years of Cycles. So, there's something happening on Twitter, so keep an eye on that. I don't know exactly what's going on, because everybody's in the dark, but it looks pretty cool. There will be more emphasis on the modules as a way for everyone in the development community to get involved. Now, I had a quick look at the modules. This was posted way back in February. They've just kind of streamlined the way that they're doing development. It means everybody from beginner to professional can kind of get involved. Combined with the Blender HQ project teams, this should help bootstrap new and exciting initiatives while making sure they're maintained in the long run. Now, obviously, open source, it kind of it has its own problems. Planning. This year began by assigning three core developer teams to focus for two months on the following projects. Asset Browser. Fucking bring the Asset Browser. Where the hell has this been? The Pose Library and the Library Overrides and Geometry Nodes. Now, there's been a lot of noise regarding Geometry Nodes. It's looking damn good, to be honest. It's starting to get there. It's getting fleshed out. Good stuff. Blender 2.93 will be released in late May, so we're obviously nearly there, to be honest. Like version 2.83, this will be LTS, meaning it will be maintained for two years. So if you're ever wanting to work in production environment or you're ever getting stuck or you know that this piece of software will work, you can usually use 2.93 for at least two years. That's, that, that's a positive thing from a perspective of workflow, to be honest. Q2 also sees a kickoff of the animation character pipeline project. Obviously they want to focus a little bit more on character animation. When it comes to it, Maya is the daddy, but hey, pending unforeseen restrictions. Like, like, shit can hit the fan, you know what I mean? It's open source. NVIDIA's industry quality work done for the USD importer is already being reviewed. Please bring on USD. We need USD. Coming in early summer, a usability workshop will be held in Amsterdam. I'd love to go to that. Amsterdam's what, 40 minutes in the plane for me. All in preparation for Blender 3.0. So the projects here are the Asset Browser and the Pose Library. Now, I don't know what the deal with the Asset Browser is. I don't know why it's taking so long, but hopefully it'll be there. Library Overrides, Geometry Nodes, Vulcan, Grease Pencil, Blender 2.93, Cycles Development, Animation Character Pipeline, USD Importer, and Blender 3.0. Now this is the stuff that they've made public, this is this is their goal at the end of the day, and it kind of just briefly goes over the Asset Browser. For years the Blender Studio has needed a robust Pose Library system for its animation project. Now because they're doing their own animation in-house, which is Sprite Fright, They'll find out what tools they need and what tools they don't need. So this is a great thing about Blender. When they run a production environment or they deliver a project, they actually get to use the software. And a lot of 3D companies, believe it or not, don't do that. They actually use user feedback. So have an in-house animation, superb. One of the best moves Blender's actually ever done. You've got obviously library overlays and it's pretty much just going over everything. Now we'll take a quick look at the Blender LTS. So when are you looking for version 3? Well, it's coming out soon. In fact, it's out now. Moving into 2024, I would imagine that's when version 4 might come out. Who knows, that's completely speculation on my part, but hey, hopefully so. And that is pretty much it. It just kind of goes over things in a little bit more detail. Surprises, there is a value in solid planning. No, definitely. However, not everything should be set in stone ahead of time. 
There are plenty of other projects expected for 2021, but they will be revealed throughout the year, so they're kind of... At the end of the day, they're a 3D software company, and they're also in a very large market, so they do kind of need to keep stuff under the radar, just they need to pull something out of the bag. Now, obviously, you've got things like grease pencil, you've got the sculpting tools, it's looking pretty positive. So let's just quickly jump into the teaser. As a teaser, here's a few ideas being considered. Now, being considered is different from being implemented. Keep that in the back of your mind. Independent physics clocks and viewports. I'd love to see better physics in general. I would like a good fluid system as well. But hey, we can't have everything. Mesh editing optimization. That is a big one. That is a huge one, to be honest. Brush manager for painting and sculpting. I think that's definitely going to be in. And the reason I think that is because the developer of the sculpt wheel, I'll leave an affiliation link in the description down below. <laughs> he's doing a lot of work with them and he's fantastic. Real-time viewport video compositor. That's pretty much in the works at the moment. Collection settings for persistent I.O. and baking. Baking. I kind of mentioned that at the beginning by one of the user comments and we'll read them in a second. Restrictive overrides, collection nodes, and dynamic particles. Mm. So overall, I think that's looking pretty damn good, to be honest. You can't complain. They have a solid plan. They've got a direction, and they've made it public. I'll go through some of these comments, and I'll give you a kind of rough idea of what's going on. Nice, good to see Vulcan coming. That is good. Performance, performance, performance. Yes. The roadmap looks great. It'd be even greater to see two more surprises. Light Lincoln, please be... Please, I was working on product shots and without having light linking, it was a fucking nightmare, I'll be honest. And here, particle nodes, well, you're nearly there to be honest. Very excited for the animation improvements, hope it'll be easier to transfer animation to games, like Unreal. I think you can get to Unreal from Blender pretty easy, and it's pretty much, majority of the comments are positive. What's your thoughts on it? Put it in the comments down below. You guys probably know a lot more than me when it comes to the development side of Blender. Do me a favour guys, please like the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Follow me on Twitter, Sporting Gumroad. You know what to do. Take care.